Full moon rising, opening day, sheep hunting. Pretty awesome day. Saw some ewes this morning, small ram, a bunch of other ewes, and Salmon River. Pretty good living. 2020 was a year that most people would like to forget with the national pandemic. But for me, it was a year that I'll never forget. I was fortunate enough to draw a coveted bighorn sheep tag, which is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity. In Idaho, you're only allowed one Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep tag in your lifetime, and the chances of drawing are about 4%. I literally knew almost nothing about hunting sheep prior to this hunt and had to do a lot of research beforehand and learned a lot along the way. I decided that since this was potentially the only chance that I would ever have it, sheep hunting, that I may as well film it for documentation and a good way to remember it. I ended up with enough footage that in the end, I decided to make a movie out of it for anyone that cared to watch. I've never made a film before and a lot of my footage was done solo, so bear with me on the quality of the video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy my story. Day two of the sheep hunt, leaving our perch where we spent the last two nights, right down there. Saw a couple of ewes this morning, but that was it this morning. Weather came in last night, it's cool and rainy this morning. Feels like fall, which is pretty nice. Making for hiking out the steep slope a little more enjoyable right now. As we were making our way up the trail, we came across a couple of small rams and a few ewes right off the side of the trail. Made us think that sheep were just going to be everywhere and rams are going to be easy to find. Boy, were we wrong. Okay, Pat, how's it going this morning? It's gone. Just had some coffee and some breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um, looking for some sheep that we found last night that disappeared this morning. Yep. Coming up with a plan for the rest of the day. And, um, tell me about this spot. What's this spot being like? Um, came up the hill, I don't know, a thousand feet from the river, uh, up to this little perch. Um, decided it wasn't, a thousand feet wasn't high enough to climb, so, uh, decided to punt my sleeping bag and my thermarest that was balled up in my dry bag like a bowling bag about 500 feet down the ridge over there. Kind of down over there. Yeah. Doesn't look that gnarly, but yeah, over there she kind of shitty. Let me go for a look here. Maybe, yeah, maybe we need a visual. Let's get a visual on sleeping bag trajectory. So yeah, it kind of went down there. How'd you feel about that, Pat? I think on a scale of one to 10 of all time pissed offness, <laughs> I was right there at about a 10. I was pretty angry. Yeah, I'd agree. Kind of lost my shit a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's all right, worked through it. Fortunately, it stopped itself on a rock down there and didn't go all the way back to the river, but it still sucked going back down there and having to retrieve it. 
It's another beautiful morning in the same river breaks, Frank Church Wilderness. It's a pretty special place to be, especially at this time of the day. Had a very restless night last night. Not great places to camp around here. Nothing flat. It's okay. Nap later. So here's our uh, food cache that we found. Just a little barrel in the hillside. Looks like it's been here a long time. Long time. It was not pretty that, handy. Not exactly bear proof, but nah. they didn't get in here. Bears didn't get in here because they're too concerned with eating all the plums on this plum tree. Plums everywhere. They're pretty delicious too. Yeah. So we're gonna gear up and go up the river a little further. Day four of the hunt. Search continues. The portion of the Salmon River drainage which we were hunting was at one time a highway of activity for miners and prospectors. Before that time, it was the home of a band of Shoshone Indians referred to as the Sheep Eaters, which were aptly named for their primary food source. Remnants of the European settlers are abundant up and down the river corridor, as well as a few remaining petroglyphs from the natives. Today it is mostly rafters and a few remaining homesteads that inhabit the otherwise remote wilderness area. Got our packs loaded down, retrieved all our food supply, heading up to the next drainage. See what's in store for us up there. It's freaking hot today, going through water and melting in the sun. jungle making our way up to our next camp from the river bottom it's real nice in here carrying two and a half gallons of water a piece packs are super light had a run in with a rattlesnake here last night hopefully he's sleeping this morning about stepped on him all kinds of bear shit on this trail too, so we were having to make a lot of noise coming out of here last night. Had a scouting day yesterday, basically trying to figure out where to go next. Our mission was to go kind of up this ridge top. Supposedly there's a trail there, or so it shows on a map there's a trail going up that ridge, but that doesn't exist. Uh, so we ended up spending the night <laughs> down the river, which was quite Beautiful. pleasant, and uh, hiked up last evening about a thousand feet, kind of glassed the area, and um, saw, saw what was up above us. Have a good place to go this morning. Yay! Here we go. So... We're trying to cache some food down at the bottom so we don't have to carry it uphill. There's been a whole lot of bear poop everywhere. So we're trying to hang it in a tree. You missed. Uh, as we're doing this, look across the river and right behind the base of that tree is a bear, which is why we're trying to do this. 
And there's apple trees here and just all kinds of good food for them. Uh, so that's what we're up to right now. Meanwhile, um, this is what we've been dealing with. Good old poison ivy everywhere. No avoiding it. We've got it all over our gear right now. All over our boots and our pants. So that'll be fun. Hopefully we don't have to deal with that later on. We'll find out if we're allergic to it. There's our bear friend. Sorry for the shakiness. All right, just made it to our next camping spot. Right here. It's as flat as anything you can find around here. Took a couple hours to climb whatever it is. Thousand some feet getting up here. Our packs are freaking heavy. Probably like, I don't know, 65 pounds a piece. There's no water anywhere up here, so we have to take like two and a half gallons of water up on the hill with us each time we come. Uh, two and a half gallons a piece. We're eating all dehydrated food, so using a lot of water, um, just cooking, making coffee, and yeah, it's hot out here. Drinking a lot of water, trying to stay hydrated. We got kind of behind the curve yesterday. Just trying to catch up today. This will be home sweet home for the next day or two. We'll see what we see up here and how long we stick around for. <laughs> Can you tell us about that hike up here and how that correlates to the, what was it, the lowest level of hell imaginable? imaginable? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what that is, but um, basically... Your version of hell would my be... My version of hell would be what just happened, but if it continued on... What just happened? For infinity. Tell us about it. Well, we started out this morning thinking that we were going to get up early enough to beat the sun on the slope that we just walked up, which didn't happen. So instead, we waited till the sun hit the slope and then started hiking up mm, 30, 40 degrees. Slope. Well, we, did, we didn't really wait. It just took forever oh, to yeah, fill up our water, to, to our filter water. our water because our water filter is... Clogged. Clogged and not working well. A lot of sediment well. in the Salmon River at this time of year, I guess. We weren't expecting that. And we had to filter five gallons of water. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, roughly. we had to filter five gallons of water. It took a while. <laughs> um, okay, so that started. Yep, took too long to filter water. Let's get this going. Um, and we slept in a little bit. We slept in a little bit. It was which very was nice on the river and very comfortable. Mm-hmm. By the time we hit the bottom of the hill, it was sunny and 10 o'clock, and we walked up 1,000 feet, felt like 1,100 feet. Come okay, on, okay, we're giving ourselves yeah. an extra 100 uh -huh. here. Uh, 1,100 feet, hot, sunny. South-facing slope. South-facing slope. Steep as hell. Super steep. Apparently, this is my story. Okay, Flying yeah. ants that biting were us. biting us, uh, looking for rattlesnakes, walking through poison ivy, and uh, a very heavy backpack. Real heavy. Real heavy with all of our and what's... water, food, tents. Right. Tents. And that felt like hell to you? That felt pretty hell. rough. And the only way I got through it, I mean, it wasn't hell. I mean, I think maybe I've had Hell worse would have been that, if it would have just continued and it was endlessly. Hell would have been if it continued forever. Forever. Infinity. But it only lasted two hours of hell. Still, my story only lasts two hours. <laughs> and. And we made um, it. We made it, and the only way I get through it is to just know that at some point it will end. 
Okay. Yeah, good story. Okay. Thanks for that recap. You're welcome. <laughs> shoveling somebody from point A to point B. It's the only way you get anywhere out here is boat, by boat or by ear on the river and uh, or flying, which is pretty awesome. Or what we're doing, which is walking. Yay. Morning. Day seven, we're here again and doing the same thing again super smoky today making glassing a little tricky but it's a deal um hopefully we'll see something pets on another ridge over there i'm gonna go check him out and see what he's up to and uh make him breakfast because that's what wives do apparently out here even when you're in the middle of nowhere and you've packed all your food Okay, so it's day seven of the hunt. Um, yesterday, yeah, day eight in the woods. Um, yesterday we decided to come up the hill just a little bit further to get a little better vantage point. We're just going to come, you know, a couple hundred feet. What, 300 feet? Yeah, a few hundred feet. Well, that turned into one false ridge. That turned into the next false ridge. That turned into... Summit. Yeah, we summited. So now we're basically up at like 1,200 feet above what we were yesterday. Up around 4,500 feet. Did have a pretty good view up here. I thought we were going to see some stuff. I'm trying to figure out where these sheep are hanging out at. Everything, it's basically 4,500 feet is where stuff, the grass starts getting green again. Below that it's just brown and there's not much food. So we think they're maybe hanging out a little higher in the timber, but we didn't see anything. But that was also due to the fact that yesterday when we got up here, there was, can't see it right now, but off up the South Fork there, there's the Porphyry Creek fire that's gone that was putting up a lot of smoke yesterday. And then upriver and to the north, there was the Shizzler fire up over there that was putting up a lot of smoke too. Basically, we got so smoked in yesterday that we couldn't glass more than one ridge line away, so that made it kind of tough. So we got one day, well, one and a half days left. We're going to make our way to that highest point on the next ridge line where we saw some sheep a few days ago and spend the night up there and see if we see those come back out. But first we have to carry these heavy ass packs. They're not as heavy right now. We got all the water out of them, but we gotta go another 2,300 feet down to the river and then come up another 2,000 feet to get to that ridge. And we found antlers. And we found antlers coming up here. So that- Which is fun, but they weigh. Kind of made it worth it, but now we have more weight to carry, so. Um, yeah. yeah. Ivy everywhere. Unavoidable. It's decadent too. 
so far we haven't had any reaction to it. Oh, look at this shit. Knock on wood. So far we haven't, but... Non-stop wading through it. Catching up with us. Just had another rattlesnake encounter too. So we're keeping our eyes up for those. Uh, oh yeah, and it's super hot again. And we're about to walk up a south facing slope. But once you get up high, you get out of the ivy at least, then it just becomes hot. Yep, just trudging on. That one's bigger pet. Yep. I see it. You got him in view. Yep. There's a small guy right there. I got a long guy. I think that's the one we were looking at because we like kind of ran over that way. Okay. And then the other one is behind the bush. Here he comes. That guy. Yeah, he's a bigger one. See that one on the left there is the one we were looking at, I think. And then the one on the right is a different one. Yeah, he's bigger. He's heavier. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude, I really like you too. That's kind of cute. Michelle's busy over there picking elderberries, like elderberry syrup, so they don't get COVID this winter. Meanwhile, just staring at this lamb here. We hiked back last night after getting defeated, trying to walk to a glassing point we had in mind where we saw some sheep a few days ago. Ended up in just a jungle of brush and neck deep poison ivy and all kinds of other fun stuff. Had a run in with a bear, chased it out of its home. Um, Ended up basically just deciding to come back to the truck last night because things weren't really going our way and came back to the truck and it turns out that was a good thing because we've seen more sheep this morning than we have last few days. Just hoping to see a few more rams but you know, it's a start. It's been good. We're tired. Lots of hiking. My feet are sore, my legs are sore. Time to go home and recoup and try again next week. Or so we thought. As we were down there collecting elderberries, we ran into another hunter who had one of the other three tags available for this unit and got a little intel from him and decided to spend another night.
thirty was it last night? Yeah, probably by the time we got in here. Yeah, about four thirty we got in here, set up camp right above where we're glassing here and grabbed our stuff and started walking down the ridge and got maybe Carrying on, our camp is right up there. We came down this ridge line here, maybe a hundred yards from camp, and I looked over on the ridge line right there, and right above that broke off stump, I spotted a ram on the ridge line. Both of us got a quick look at him, and he looked like definite close to full curl ram broomed heavy good looking ram gave us enough time just to get a glance at him before he disappeared over the ridge and then two two smaller rams that were both like half to three quarter curl rams probably what would you that. say yeah three quarter three quarter well, curl rams no grooming though um, but weren't broomed just kind of lighter in the tips followed him over the ridge there which was disappointing, but exciting to finally see a group of rams. So we spent the night up here last night, glassing this hillside here, the slope, hoping maybe they'd circle back around and come back out. And they came back in this morning and was just socked in with smoke. Um, got a cold front coming through right now it's pushing some of it out of here but it was almost impossible to see this morning and I haven't seen anything come back through did watch a bear up on the hillside right right there last night laying in a huckleberry patch eating huckleberries <laughs> cute I think that's what we're about to go do is pack up camp and eat some huckleberries and head home and regroup and come up with a plan for the next part of the hunt. Got anything else to add? It's been a very memorable 10 days. It's been amazing. Yeah, it has. We've learned a lot about sheep. It's been good. It's been really good. Miserable at times and absolutely incredible at times. Yeah. yeah. sooner than I expected. Plans kind of changed a little bit. I was going to go up river with my buddy Brent. He's got a jet boat. He works with me uh, at the smoke jumper base. Things are really busy with the fire world right now, as you can see by all the smoke. Um, so he was still busy working. And so I decided just to come back out to where I had been last week and saw those rams. Um, back here by myself. Drove in, got to a glassing point. Spotted this ram last night, just got a glimpse of him. No, don't go over the hill. Damn it. There he goes. Got his number. I know where he's at there. Oh, there's another one coming, it looks like. Okay, so I got a couple of rams. Pretty far away from here to 
totally judge those ones. I mean, look like he had pretty decent mass to him. I couldn't really tell if he was broomed or if he was just short. Um, wasn't planning going out there, but now I might have to come up with a plan to get closer there. I was going to go back to where I was last week. It's a long ways out, and I'm solo this time, so... Do some more glassing this morning, kind of figure out what I want to do from here. Oh, there he is again. That might be the other one. I think that's the other one. It looks a little shorter. Nice to see some rams this morning, though. Good way to start the day. Good way to start the second part of this hunt. Let's see what it brings. Got another one here. Not sure if it's that second one that I was looking at. Right below where those last two were. Might be that second one. So it's day 12 of the hunt, started out this morning at the truck, glassing, saw those three rams, um, watched where they went and bedded down, and or where I thought they bedded down at least, and um, decided I might as well try and go and see if I could locate them, put a stock on them. So, I went on what my wife would call a misery mission. Ended up taking me, I don't know, most of the day to get here. Carrying, I think I brought 12 liters of water with me. It's pretty hot again today. I drank probably close to four liters today just trying to get here. Um, yeah. Got down here, went as light as possible. I didn't even bring a tent, you know. I'm just sleeping on a space blanket tonight. Uh, hiked down to where I had last seen those rams and where I thought they maybe would have come back out again this evening where I saw them last night and this morning. From across the way, it looked like it was going to be a good glassing point. Um, but I got to it and it was just kind of a ridge line that just kept falling away and you couldn't really see very far and so I kept following it down and down and further and further and I don't know, got to some got to a point where I think they might have been, but it was hard to tell from you know, across the way. Once you get on the slope everything looks different. Looked around until right before dusk, didn't see anything. Saw a lot of tracks and a lot of sign, like they're definitely hanging out there. Started heading back up the hill, moving quick, trying to get the last couple minutes of light before I had to put my headlamp on. And came up the hill and frickin' spooked those three rams. They were like 50 yards away from me. I just walked right past them going down, or maybe they came out to feed and were right where I was coming back up. and. Even at 50 yards, like, I still had a hard time making out what they were exactly. I mean, they they all looked heavy as they were running away, but I was, like, trying to get my gun on them, and it was just too dark to even really tell. Super, super disappointing and frustrating. I am exhausted. Um, yeah, today was one of the harder days I've had this whole hunt, trying to recoup, recoup, and 
get some sleep tonight and figure out what to do tomorrow. I guess I'm just going to do a long hike out of here. And I don't know. It seems pointless staying here. I'm sure I spook those things a mile away. So, yeah, try and get some sleep and rest up and see what tomorrow brings. Good night. It's Sunday, September 13th, day 15 of the hunt, which means I have exactly one month from today before the season closes. Um, haven't checked in the last couple days after I busted those rams the other night. Woke up the next morning and decided I hiked all the way in there with all my food and water. I might as well spend another day and see if I could relocate them. No such luck. Hiked out of there, came back to the spot where Michelle and I saw those three rams last week and posted up here, tried to glass last night and this evening to see if I could re relocate those rams, but it's just so socked in with smoke right now you can hardly glass more than a thousand yards at the most so spent a few hours there this morning glassing wasn't really seeing anything so i decided to try and do a little bit of steel hunting have a nice kind of open grassy sparsely treed slope kind of down below me Looks like the right recipe for where sheep might want to hang out at. A um, little bit of old sign in here, but nothing fresh. Uh, sat down here just to watch for a while and heard some crashing behind me. And looked up the hill and there's a mama bear and her two cubs that walked in right behind me down the ridge to where I was trying to go to, making a bunch of noise, so it's kind of pointless for me to keep going down that way. They were kind of coming from back where I got my camp set up, and I didn't take the time to hang my food in a tree, so it's the second bear I've seen pretty close to my camp up there, so I'm going to have to go up there and make sure my food is all hunt secure. Wait wait out the heat of the day and head back out this evening and hopefully the smoke clears and I can try and do some glassing this evening. <sighs> Tough hunting. Hopefully the weather changes, smoke clears out and start seeing some more sheep. Yeah. <laughs> how a bear that size can crawl up a tree. It's crazy. He's way the hell up there. Hey bear. Monday morning. Some crazy skies this morning. Super windy last night. Just socked in with smoke, making for an awesome sunrise right now. Some really dark skies. I can't tell if it's just a bunch of smoke or if it's rain clouds coming in. Feels like a front coming in from the north. I haven't seen the weather, so who knows what it is. Hopefully a little change. <clears throat> no sheep moving this morning though. Got up early. Glassing at first light. It didn't get light until quarter after seven this morning just with these dark skies. Man, that's cool. It's gonna be a good day. Well, it's 
Wednesday morning. I've been out here for a week now alone. And this is what I'm dealing with. If you're thinking, I can't really see what's on the screen, neither can I. That's a hillside about a quarter of a mile away. And it's just so socked in with smoke that you can't see anything. But not here. All week trying to glass. The first day wasn't bad. First day and a half and then just socked in with smoke and hasn't cleared since. I've been waking up with ash all over my tent. And yeah, it's been frustrating. Can't see a damn thing. Got. Let's see if I can find it here. There we go. We got the sun again, though. Just glowing orange. So it's my last day out here. I'm gonna pack up camp and head home, regroup. I'm supposed to be going out with. My buddy Brent and Boss Joe and Michelle coming up river on the jet boat this weekend. Brent's a river guide, sheep hunter extraordinaire, so hopefully fresh set of eyes and seeing some different country will help and cross our fingers that the smoke clears. That's all for now. Hi, Pat. Hi. How's it going? Um, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Glassing is superb right now. Yeah. Yep. A pitter patter. Raindrops. Uh huh. <laughs> trying to spot sheep in this. Um, yeah. It has come in and out. It's constantly moving. Sometimes you get a little good spot, but it's pretty frustrating. Um, it's nice to see some weather. It's good that it's raining. Everything's damp, but this makes it a little difficult. Tell me what just happened. Tell me a hunting story. I shot my first bear down from there, which was a 200 yard shot. Uh huh. Um, my first time it hit it right in the corner, court, um, one of the quarters. Then my, then he started running. Then my second shot, I smoked him. You smoked him. And he's dead. Then he uh, tumbled down this rock slide. To uh huh. And stop. Yep. Up here. Yeah, it was a heck of a shot. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Good job. Wait till Pat for the spotting job. Yeah. yeah. All right. I spotted the bear for you. High speed, high speed spotting job. Yep. Yeah. I spotted the bear for you, so now you have to spot yeah. a ram for me. <laughs> yeah. Sound good? Okay. Okay.
Okay, so it's September 22nd. I haven't checked in in a few days, a little while. Um, basically came up here Friday with um, buddy and co-worker Brent Sawyer as uh, Backcountry River Guides. He does steelhead guides up here uh, in the fall and knows his country really well and has sheep hunted up here um, quite a bit and is now actually a sheep hunting guide. Um, so yeah, get in contact with him if you ever want to go sheep hunting in this country. Um, but he was coming up here anyway with his son to go bear hunting. Um, son Walker, who got that um, sweet little black bear the other day, his first, first kill ever, big game. So that was exciting to see. Um, but came up with two of them and Michelle spent four days. It rained the first couple days. Well, it was really smoky the first day. Rained the next, so a couple days of no viz and then cleared out. and Weren't able to locate any rams. Um, saw some ewes, but no rams, even with an extra couple sets of eyes. Um, they had to head back to work, so... Sawyer just left me up here and is coming back next weekend to pick me up. So I've got five days up here alone um, to try and find a ram. He left me in some pretty good country. Uh, went up this morning and glassed up a half a dozen rams. Two of them looked like they're definitely shooters. Um, they're about 3,000 feet up from the river bottom, which is where I'm at here. Got my camp set up. Um, they're on a timbered face. A couple of sub ridges coming through there, but it looks like it's going to be tough to try and get on like a sub ridge where they're not going to notice me and get a shot at them. And who knows where they're going to be when I get up there. That was this morning. It's midday already and it's going to take me all afternoon to climb up this slope here um kind of see the top of it right there and that's not even the top that's only like two-thirds of the way up there uh, i have a little bit of cloud cover today it's not the hottest day but it's still going to be warm um there is a water source that I know of, but it's a ways up there. It's I'm not going to make it to it tonight or even the next day, probably. Um, and I'm not even exactly sure where it is. So, taking up, I think I got 10 liters of water that I'm taking up. Hoping that when I get up there, I can locate that water source if I don't find those rams right away. And be able to refill once I get up there um, yeah which kind of sucks my pack is extremely heavy again getting sick of lugging that thing around hopefully this is the last time we'll see if I can even relocate those rams who knows where they're gonna be <sighs> my legs are getting tired I'm getting tired feeling a little rejuvenated now that I've finally found some more rams it's been I don't know, 10 or 12 days since I busted that last group and hitting a dry spell. So it's good to finally see something. And I don't know, I'm not going to hold my breath, but it'd be nice to locate these. And we'll see. Fingers crossed. Whew, that one's big. This is the second one to the left. That's a good ram right there. So we got six rams total. Two definite shooters. That one on top looks pretty damn good too. She's fucking up that brush. Yeah, that's a good ram up there. I don't know how I'm going to get close. 
most of these. Oh, that one up top is the one now. So I hiked up here yesterday afternoon. It was definitely one of the worst hikes I've done this whole hunt. It took me like four and a half hours to climb, I don't know, about 3,000 feet. Just steep and hot and heavy back. Pretty miserable. Managed to get up here uh, right before dark and got the last 30 minutes of daylight to glass and was able to find those six rams right below me. Um, probably 800 feet in elevation below me and maybe a quarter mile away. Um, I just camped right on the other side of the ridge from them last night. Hopefully they're still there this morning. We'll find out. Pretty exciting. Hopefully they didn't disappear. I woke up early that morning, way before daylight, and was super excited knowing that I potentially had rams right below me. It had been about a half an hour since the sun rose and the rams were nowhere to be seen. Then I hear a bull bugle, and coming from the same place where I'd seen the rams the night before, out walks this bull. I would have been super excited if I was elk hunting, but now I was just frustrated thinking that this bull may have spooked those rams out of the area. I had been sitting on the ridge for a few hours that morning and hadn't been able to relocate those rams. I started to think that they might have disappeared overnight. Then around 11 o'clock I finally spotted one about 650 yards below me. He was a decent ram, but without having the other five rams to compare it to, I was unsure if he was the biggest of the group. I watched him for about 45 minutes, thinking that the other five rams had to be close by, but they were nowhere to be seen. I decided that he was a mature ram and would be good enough for me. It was a pretty steep angle from my perch to where the ram was standing, about a 30 degree slope with a slight crosswind. I was confident shooting my rifle at the range out to 850 yards, but was trying to limit shooting an animal past 650 yards. This ram was right on the edge of my comfort and there was no way to get closer without being noticed. I did the calculations in my shooter app and dry fired several rounds and decided that this might be my only chance so I might as well take it. I got set, took a deep breath, took a shot, and watched the ram stand there for a second, totally unfazed, and walked away into the brush. Being solo, I didn't have a spotter, so I had my camera set up on the, sc on the spotting scope and mistakenly pushed the camera button instead of the video so I couldn't replay the shot but I was certain I had missed. I sat there for about 15 minutes in total disgust with myself, feeling like I had just blown my opportunity. Then, from out of the brush where I had last seen him, he reappeared, along with the other five rams that he had been hanging out with the day before. I counted six rams and now knew for sure that I had missed my first shot. I watched them walk up the hill and bed down, totally unconcerned with the racket I had just made. I took a good look at the rams, trying to distinguish which ram I had shot at and assessing if any of them were wounded. I couldn't find any indication of any of them being wounded and picked the one that I thought I had shot at earlier. I ranged him at 625 yards, slightly closer than the last shot, made my adjustments on my turret, and fired another round. Missed. Again. Now I'm freaking out. I heard a crack when the bullet hit and was pretty sure that I'd hit the rock right over the top of his back. 
One variable that I hadn't accounted for was the heat, which created an upslope wind, which decreased the amount of bullet drop. The ram still had no idea where the shot had come from and stood there looking confused. Without making any adjustments to my scope, I loaded another round, aimed a few inches lower, took another shot. and watched him crumple in his tracks. I wish that I had a spotter to adjust my camera for me, but being solo, that was the last of my worries. He's down. Oh, he's down. Holy crap. Found him. Oh man. Oh, he's awesome. Holy crap, tumbled down the hill from up there. Whew. Whew. I got my work ahead of me. It's hot out, gotta get the, this thing cut up fast. Whew. Hell yeah, finally, didn't think it was gonna happen. And what an awesome ram to end it with. So remember uh, Michelle's version of her personal hell, carrying a heavy pack up a steep slope in the heat? That's pretty much what I'm going through. It's been like three days of this now. I am so tired. Um, yeah, just getting up to the ridge where I spotted those rams was a grind. It's 3,000 up a pretty steep, and you can see above me kind of what I'm dealing with here. Coming all the way from down there. And then yesterday, I think I got to that ram around like 1.30 and got back to my spike camp right about dark. Um, had a really short night's sleep, got windy, and just couldn't sleep with all the wind blowing on the tent. Woke up early this morning, had it in my mind that I was going to get this thing off the hill in one go. Dumped all my food that I had up there, just took the trash, um, finished caping out, um, the rest of that cape from the skull, trying to get any extra loose meat off the skull that I could to lighten the load. Got it all loaded up on my pack, could barely even stand up with it. Made it, I don't know, maybe 400 feet down the hill. Stumbled and kind of fell on my butt and I could not get up again. It was not happening. So dropped half the load up there and I've just been shuttling it down the hill, go down a thousand feet, drop the load, come up a thousand feet, grab the load. Been doing that all day. It's four o'clock, a little 4.30 right now. I think I've got another 1,400 feet to go to get to the river. And this is the last load I've got on my back right now. I can't wait to get to the bottom of the river and take this pack off and crack a beer. <sighs> yeah, it'll be worth it in the end. Right now, I am wrecked.
Well, that's my story. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. A big thanks goes out to my lovely wife, Michelle, for tagging along and part of the hunt and keeping me motivated. Also, a big thanks to my buddy Brent for shuttling me up the river and pointing me in the right direction. One more thanks to Oliver Walquist for all the help with my gun and all the advice along the way. Good luck to the rest of you sheep fanatics out there. I hope you all someday get the opportunity to experience it for yourself.